proxies are a powerful feature of the JavaScript language, and many of the popular libraries and frameworks are using them to some extent under the hood. In this video, we'll spend a few minutes taking a look at how to use proxies and what you can achieve by knowing how to work with them. We'll get to writing some code in just a second, but first, let's spend 30 seconds discussing the theoretical concepts. In computer programming, proxies are an established software design pattern, which, in short, allow you to define an interface on top of a different target entity. The target can be anything from a network connection to a large file on the disk, but in the JavaScript world, proxies will wrap other in-memory objects. Why use them? Well, there are two main reasons. You can control the access to the target object, or you can provide additional functionality if you want to enhance the target's behavior. Ok, let's jump right into it. First, we'll be needing a target object. Using an object literal, I'm simply defining a structure with a name and a count property. Then, I'm declaring a handler with a single method named get. In proxy terms, this method is called a trap because it traps the call to the target object. We can receive three arguments here, and we'll get back to them in a second, but for now, let's simply log in the console any call to the get trap. Finally, we can create a proxy instance using the proxy constructor, which accepts two arguments, a target and a handler. Let's see what happens when we want to print out the name property. It should not come as a surprise that you'll get an undefined, even though the target object has a name property already defined. This is where the get trap comes into play. Whenever you are accessing a property of the proxy, the trap will be called first. It is up to you to decide what type of action will be performed here. In this example, for instance, depending on a flag called private, we can either return every object property anonymized, or we can forward a property access request to the actual underlying target using the reflect object. As a quick side note, reflect is a built-in special object exposing a handful of static methods, which are a one-to-one -one mapping to the existing proxy methods, and you can use these to work with the original target object. So, back to the code. If we change the private flag value, the console log will either print a target property or an anonymized message. Ok, with some of the basics out of the way, let's now work on a real world scenario. Just like objects, arrays can be the building block of proxies as well. In this use case, I want to be able to retrieve parts of the array based on a pair of indexes I'm sending through as a parameter in the square brackets. So, while array of 1 will return the orange string, array of 1 to 3 will return the orange and banana array. Back to the code, I am defining a function which accepts an array as an argument and returns a proxy which uses the array as its target. Inside the get method, I am checking the key of the property and if that's a string containing a colon, I am extracting the start and the end values. Let's also allow users to avoid specifying a start or an end, in which case this will default to either the start or the end of the array. Once we get the string values parsed to numbers, we can use the reflect apply method to perform an array slice on the target between the start and the end indexes. Finally, if the key is not containing a colon, let's simply forward the get call to the target and mimic the default array behavior. To test our implementation, we'll call the awesome array function and assign its returned proxy to an array value. As I mentioned earlier, I am passing the target array as the function argument and this should feel pretty familiar if you worked with libraries aimed to enhance your code in the past. In the console log, I am passing the colon based index in the square brackets and you can see that the return type will follow the rules we defined a minute ago. Another scenario I want to look at next is the option to sync object or state data from JavaScript to the DOM. This is going to be a rather naive implementation, but its aim is to show you the option to perform side effects whenever some internal state changes. So I'm defining an awesome element function which accepts an element ID as an argument. After I'm fetching a reference to the DOM element, I am returning a proxy with a target object containing a value and a handler containing a set trap. Inside the function, the logic is pretty simple. Whenever somebody wants to update the proxy internal value, a DOM inner HTML update will be performed as well. As I said, this is an extremely simplified version of keeping state and DOM in sync, and keep in mind that proxies come with some overhead whenever you are using them as well. This sums up our quick incursion into proxies. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you found this content useful. Thank you for watching.